Welcome to a freezing Tuesday morning and welcome to the incredible, amazing, these ad adjectives are all yet to be decided, but welcome to the 2022 Honda Goldwing Standard. No, not the bagger. We're not allowed to call it the bagger. It's just the non-touring version. Non-touring version means it doesn't have the big seat and top box on the back. So it's a bit, bit, bit better looking, in my opinion, but perhaps a little bit less practical, certainly if you want to carry a pillion. It's also a little bit cheaper. So this motorcycle is the jewel in the Honda crown. It is the ultimate Honda motorcycle. The the uh, legendary, I think it deserves legendary status. I think even non-motorcyclists have heard of the Honda Goldwing. This thing is an absolute mile muncher. It's got a six cylinder, flat six engine. So, you know, a boxer configuration. So you can see you've got three cylinders poking out each side of the bike. Now that keeps the weight incredibly low. I mean, you can see you know, the actual engine is hardly, it's almost touching the ground. So even though this bike weighs 300 and just under 370 kilos, because that weight's so low, it's supposed to handle very, very well this machine. TMF rates these. Everyone who's tried one of these rates these. I've never been a, I've never wanted, I've never been a Goldwing type of guy, but now I am 51, perhaps, it is time to see what all the fuss is about. So join me on this first ride video. Basically, I, I've just wheeled this out the garage and come around the block, and this is it. First time ever riding a Goldwing. Also, first time ever riding a bike with the DTC, the dual clutch transmission, like the automatic transmission which Honda do. So there's a lot of firsts with this video. So grab yourself a milky cuppa and let's take this beast out for a spin. Jobsy, roll the intro. So normally when bikes get dropped off to me or I'm collecting bikes, I need no introduction, you know, the guy tries to tell me about it, I'm like, mate, come on, I know how to ride one of these. With this one, I, had to, I was actually asking, hang on a minute, mate, don't disappear, hang on, how, how do you work it, how do you use a DCT, how do you turn it on even, you know, what do I do, <laughs> what do I do with this thing? So I had the full walkthrough of everything about this bike, like I said, I don't know everything yet, this is all new, there's a lot of tech on this machine, this thing's got seven gears it's got creep mode forward and back i've always said to myself if my bike needs a reverse gear it's too big you may as well buy a car that's something i've always said it'd be really interesting that by the time i've finished with this bike i've got this bike for about a month am i going to think the same at this stage i really don't know some of the other tech on here think of what tech you've got on a car <laughs> because you've more or less got it on this central locking so when the bike's locked everything's locked when the bike's open everything's open including the panniers little push button openers on the panniers no key you don't have to mess about getting your keys out it's the push of a button and when you lock the bike it locks the panniers it's got little cubby holes it's got a handbrake <laughs> <laughs> it's got a handbrake, it's got a handbrake, it's got a release for the fuel cap, can't get in the fuel cap without pushing the release button. The guy nearly didn't tell me where it was, because I wouldn't have had a clue, where, where, where's, where's the gas release? Well, it's under this little cubby hole, push that one. <laughs> so I mean, this is a bike you really do need that little bit of introduction before you ride it. As I say, that 1800cc, 125 horsepower, 170 Newton meters of torque. This is just a torque monster, this engine. Of course, shaft drive. People have said this is a bit like the Rocket 3. Think of it as a more comfortable, more enclosed Rocket 3. And I really like the sound of that. Let's jump aboard. So jumping aboard, we've got all of this here, all of this bike here. TFT, seven inch TFT, smaller LCDs, analog gauges, it's like a fighter jet. So I've got, I'm going to try and use the creep reverse now. So 
It's in neutral, won't start with the side stand down. Put it in, put the kill switch on. Why is it not starting? Uh, oh, oh, here we go. Sorry, push that down to start it. Now, there's a little creep button here. <laughs> the creep. So, you push the creep, push the creep and push the creep and pull the brake. There we go. Hold the brake down and push the, the. So, this should be creep backwards, hopefully. Oh, no, you've got, to, oh, you've got to push the toggle buttons. You've got to push the toggle buttons. That's backwards. So, I thought this ran on the starter motor this creep. I thought it was the starter motor, but apparently it's actually, you know, it's, the, it's just separate gear, the really geared down version of the engine. So you've got paddles here to go up and down. It's, it's DCT, which means it's automatic, like a flappy paddle box in a, you know, that sort of thing. But the pedals are here. So we're in creep. I want to come out of creep. That's neutral. Into drive. I've got it in tour mode. Apparently sport's what you want, but we're going to start in tour. And if I accelerate, it should pull away. Whoa, hey! Whoa, hey! I now need my glasses again. Right, a bit of handling around here. What's it like? We'll keep the. Oh Christ, that's the Insta 360. <laughs> Hit the bar. You alright, sir? Sorry about that. Did you survive? Blimey, that's not a good start, is it? Glasses. I ought to really have my glasses, didn't I? Unless this screen is prescription. Filthy conditions today, a bit wet. I think they've just sorted the roads because it's that cold spell we've got coming. <sighs> anyway, where we are. I think that's flashing because it's cold. I think it's a it looks like a tyre warning, but I think that's probably because it's a cold. So it's like an ice warning, maybe. That's what I'm hoping. We've also got a fully electric screen, which is ridiculous. I mean, look at that. Oh, I can feel nothing. I'm in a complete bubble of calm. I see where TMF got the expression from there. That is a screen and a half, isn't it? Look at that screen. I'm 6'2", 20 stone. So this, this is a bike I actually don't look too big on for a change. And the screen is way above my head. People rave about the handling of these. You know, because of that, that boxer engine, as I said at the beginning, is so low down in the chassis. It's the same as the GS, isn't it? Those boxer engines where they're low, where the weight's low because of the way the cylinders are horizontally mounted, it keeps it all the weight low. So even though this is a 350 kilo motorcycle, people tell me, you won't tell. Once it's rolling, you won't even notice the weight. Throttle response is quite nice in tour. I mean, I'll say I'm, uh, I've never even tried a DCT before. I know everyone who tries tries it says they love the DCT. It's incredible. We will see. We will see what we think of DCT. Apparently for 2023, if you're looking at getting a gold wing, DCT is your only option. You can't get the manual on this version, on the bagger version, or maybe any of the gold wings actually, in 2023. Just pulling away when it's, it's effortless, you know. I mean, the, it's, the red lines are 6,000 RPM. It's, it's a bit like a car, so everything's happening below 2,000 revs, you know. that. It's just, uh, yeah, it's just, it's really nice, I have to say. It is freezing today. I don't know what the temperature is. At five degrees, the bike says it's five degrees. I've got jeans on with an undersuit. And, uh, I mean, I'm so tucked in. My legs are tucked in in this little crevice here. I'm not even feeling any air, really, on my legs. And the screen is right up and the visor's open. I've got nowhere on my chest. You know, I'm... I'm really, really warm. I've purposely not wrapped up. I've just got my hoodie on over my Knox Urban Pro jacket. I've not purposely sort of wrapped up. And behind this screen, behind this frontage, it's extremely warm. I'm going to put it into sport mode. That's enough of tour mode. Let's give it a bit of sport. And this should make the bike, you know, hang on to the gears a little bit longer. Be a little bit more responsive. Got to be a little bit careful. I don't... <laughs> That's smooth power. That's smooth power. Oh, it's a corner. I think it's one of those, you know, you just got to get used to that weight in the corners. A bit like the Rocket 3, once you're used to how it feels in the corners, because it's, you know, it's a long bike, like the Rocket. You know, so I'm hoping it will handle like the Rocket once you're used to the handling, you know. God, sounds nice, doesn't it? Sounds throaty, doesn't it? 
<laughs> oh, we're up to what? We're up to 60. We're up to 60. Getting a little bit of wind coming around my shoulders now. But still. <laughs> Bubble of calm. Bubble of calm. Let's wait for this option. Let's wait for this option. <laughs> 125 horsepower. It's not masses of power, but it's got it's got uh, 170 newton meters. So the torque is way higher than the power this engine makes. It's got a single. It's just a single overhead cam, but 24 valves. So four valves per cylinder, but just a single overhead cam. I mean, this this is this engine isn't about outright horsepower. Obviously, it's about that drive. It's about that torque. It's about riding that wave of torque. Well, I'm, I'm going to put it back into tour mode because, it, you know, in the sport mode, the engine's there, it's waiting to go. So I'm going to go back to tour mode and relax the engine a little bit until we get to something a little bit more appropriate. And probably these wet roads, nothing is probably going to be appropriate today. Oh, it's even telling me what the speed limit is, that 60 miles an hour. It's telling me this is a 60 mile an hour stretch of road. It tells me I can go 10 miles an hour faster. Heated grips, nice. Five levels of heat on the grips. On the on the bag of no, you can't call it a bag of chops. On the non-touring, the standard, you can't have an electric. It doesn't have the heated seat. So the tour, the tour version, I think you get a heated seat. Um, you get electronically adjustable suspension. It's just manual on this one. Uh, you get all the rear seat, obviously, for your pillion. Um, I think that's it. But the tour version is nigh on £30,000. This version is just a smidge over £25,000. The seat is wow. The seat is super comfortable. So I've actually found a seat that is wider than my bottom. That's saying something. That is an incredibly, give me a flash, that's an incredibly wide, comfortable seat because I always struggle with my ass hanging over <laughs> the seat. Not so on a wing through town you know in that tour mode the dct is perfect you know it, it seems to be in the right gear all the time just effortless absolutely effortless this would be so good to do you know a, a, a big trip on but as i always say i don't want to do a big trip to the alps into europe if when i get to the twisties i think oh this would have been great if i brought the sports bike you know the bike you're riding has to be enjoyable in the twisties. I think that's a massively important part of a touring machine. So we'll see on this one. If we don't get a chance to test that properly today, we've got a big, a big trip planned. At Greg's house, he actually has the BMW K1600 at his house at the moment. And after this first ride on the Goldwing, There'll be a video from Greg, first ride on the K1600. So here be, he's taken the K1600 out on his own. He's done his first solo video. So I've done the first ride on the Goldwing. He's done the first ride on the K1600. Then we're meeting up and we're going for a day out on the Isle of Wight. So we're taking both the bikes to the Isle of Wight and then we're gonna swap over and try the other person's bike. So if you're thinking of one of these big tourers and you're thinking, oh, K1600, oh, Goldwing, what do I want? Don't forget to subscribe or you will miss it. All right, now down here, we have a little twisty bit of road down here. This is a twisty, nadgery little bit of road. It'll be a good test for this bike. I mean, I know this bike, you know, it's not a back lane scratcher, is it? But you want to go on back lanes, so you don't want something which is absolutely out of the question that you can take it down a back lane or two. And down here, I'm going to put it in sport mode. Let's wake the gearbox up a little bit. It's effortless over the bumps. Like I say, this this standard version doesn't have the electronic suspension, which I think is I think is probably the main reason to get the tour version, isn't it? If it, well, certainly if you're not you know, if you're not worried about your pillion's comfort, I think the electronic suspension on this sort of bike could work really really well. Whoa, she knocks down. I mean, this feels nice. It's comfortable. But there's always a compromise, isn't there? It's got, to, it's got to be good in every situation. 
and that's not necessarily the case you know with with manual suspension whereas the electronic will just get it dialed in so if you want to be sporty it will change into sport mode if you want to be comfortable it will go more it will go more sporty than this and it will go more comfortable than this so you know you've got those options of course it is manually adjustable but you know i don't really feel like getting out and getting my spanners out and i want to go a bit of twisty road i'm getting used to the weight now it does feel a bit like the rocket 3 perhaps a little bit heavier feeling than the rocket 3 nowhere near as much grunt as the rocket 3 of course because that's a two and a half litre 240 new meters of torque I mean, that's, it is a monster but it's similar if I had to compare it to something else I've ridden I'd say it feels similar to the rocket 3 the way you're sort of steering it around the corners you know, the way it's sort of changing direction but yeah it feels it feels not bad from an agility point of view I would say I could certainly have fun on this you know a bit of rear brake <laughs> of course you will I guess you'll find the limit of the ground clearance before you'll find any other limits on this front brake a bit of hard front brake it doesn't you know with that tele lever setup it doesn't dive when you go on that front brake so it's, it remains pretty level I mean you do have to be very conscious of your you know your your road positioning you're not going to be able to change direction quickly you need to you need to really think about your lines oh there's a bit of a jump here <laughs> Woo, here we go let's all test the suspension Whoa, <laughs> brake the front brakes are really good actually really good yeah i mean it's you know <laughs> if you want the back lane scratcher this isn't it, but it can still raise a grin when the going does get twisty, and I think that's the important thing. Seat height is really nice. I mean, you know, I'm, I am 6'2", but it's very, it's a, it's a low bike. The seat's low. It's, I mean, I'm fully flat-footed and some. So I think even if you are vertically challenged, you'll get your feet down on this, no problem. <laughs> That'll be 60 miles an hour. It's not shy. She's not shy. Yeah, it's a little bit in sport mode. It's sort of hanging on. It's there on the throttle, want, wanting to go. You know, it's, it's quite, quite sort of aggressive on the throttle in the sport. It certainly wakes the bike up. Maybe almost a little bit too, too ready on the throttle. Brakes, brakes are good. It goes down through the ball, it's tipping in on. Out the corners. A bit of rear brake. The front, when you're on the front, it doesn't unsettle it too much, but I find the, on a big bike like this, it's better to do a bit of rear brake to, to settle it down. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear, chops! This isn't this isn't the review we wanted. <laughs> this is not how to review a Goldwing. Pack it in. Rear brake. Well, this is how to review a Goldwing. Because if I want a Goldwing, I want to be able to ride it like this. Sometimes I'm not quite ready for the the Zimmer frame yet. I want. And it's got some lean to it as well. I, I thought it might have decked out by now. It's got a bit of lean to it. I say yeah. Sounds nice too, doesn't it? Sounds lovely. <laughs> got a bit of bounce on then. You've got to be, it takes quite a lot of concentration to really pedal this around. You know, you may not be going as fast as you are on your sports bike or your super naked, but it's taking the same amount of concentration if not a little bit more so. Oh, sounds lovely. Right, that's enough of that. Let's bang it back in tour. 
uh, indicators, got self cancelling indicators and all of that shebang. All of that shebang. It's the low, well you notice the weight, it's, it's, it's the low, well not the weight so much, but that the handling feels weird. It's, it's on those very, very low speed corners. That's when you sort of notice the, the, the weight and the handling of the bike. I think because it's long, that's where you notice the length, I think more than anything. But I have to say that this DCT, we're going to go through a bit of town work now, a bit of traffic. We'll see how the DCT is like in traffic, but I can hear it going up and down the box. I mean, I don't like electric, but well, <laughs> one of the things I don't like about electric bikes, apart from everything I mentioned last time, is the fact that there's no gearbox, you know, they're automatic. I'm not a fan of automatic bikes. Um, it wouldn't be my first choice unless it's perhaps something like this. Perhaps something like this, it does make some sense having an auto, but um, it seems to work very well. It certainly don't feel like, well, so far, I'm not feeling like it's in the wrong gear at the wrong time, and it's annoying. And you have got the paddles. I mean, if you want to do a quick overtake, you can bang the paddles, bang the paddle, drop a cog, and then do your overtake, you know? But yeah, I'm not, I don't think I'd, I might go DCT on one of these. This will be the only bike I think I'd consider getting a semi-auto. Getting a semi. I do want to try a little bit of filtering on this because a lot of people say, you know, if you can't filter, you might as well be in a car. And I, I do sort of agree, agree with that to a degree. So I do want to try a little, I mean, it's wide, but you know, you're going to be able to filter on, on the, the wide. You're not going to be able to get through the real thin stuff. Of course you're not. But you're going to be able to get through the bigger stuff. So as long as you can filter in sort of 80% of the situations, I'm happy. You've also got all this lot here. I mean, you've got, st it's got stereo. Uh, let's see if we can get to the stereo, shall we? Let's see if we can get, let's see if we can put a, get it to the stereo section. I think you can twiddle this one. Oh, that's the volume, or you can do it on the uh, the buttons here. Audio. It's quite loud, isn't it? Oh, excuse me. Sorry, I'm 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 being very. Oh, hello. I'm being very noisy here. Living in a box. Oh yeah, funky, funky. Get down on it. Get down on it. Are you gonna do I can't. I can't do it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> what am I doing for the image of the gold ring? I'm destroying it. Get down on it. <laughs> Shaking his head at me. <laughs> oh, I've seen it all now. Let's turn it down. I've seen it all. That is funny. That's amusing. <laughs> This is going to be a ridiculous video. First ride and I can't even get it out of the drive. Uh, the reason I've started this little video sat inside is because it's freezing outside, obviously. Chopsy, when he does his, he's happy to go outside any time of the year, but I don't know if you know, but obviously he's ex-Special Forces, so he can take it much more than I can. Um, did I say Special Forces? Sorry, ex-Parcel Force. So it's close. It's easy. I think that is the... It's so easy. And it's obviously built just to do massive miles this um the engine's so flexible right at the bottom you can see the revs there <laughs> 